Buckle up, excellence junkies, because this podcast is definitely for you. Welcome to Rocket Fuel. Do you wish that you could surround yourself with people that love to kick ass just like you? Well, come to my party, baby, and meet some of the brightest stars in the entrepreneurial galaxy because it is my mission to give these entrepreneurs a platform to declare what they are on this planet to accomplish and to show you why they are rocket fuel. And we're live! Woohoo! Welcome to the Rocket Fuel Podcast, guys. This this episode is just gonna be so amazing for you guys that are in aches and pains and wonder why why can't I resolve this? Like nothing that I do is is making this go away. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but sometimes I think, well, maybe my stress, what's going on in my life or whatever, maybe that's affecting my body because I didn't actually physically hurt myself, but I feel like I got hit by a truck, right? So today I have an amazing expert. She's she's a medical magician, I say, because she really brings the beautiful magic of understanding body and story and soul um, together with with medicine. And we are really grateful to have Melanie Weller today. Expert, what would you call yourself? Oh, I call you a medical magician. But, mm, you know. <laughs> I like medical. I like medical magician. I uh, yeah. I I've read, I think um, medical magician is probably the most true, like the truest way I see myself. Like, for conventional terms, I've been calling myself a medical visionary, just to, like to kind of really, like, like you know, it, like if, for the bulk of the my. 25 year physical therapy career, I've seen people that have failed multiple other interventions and yeah. see, you know, and I get everybody that falls through the cracks lands in my office and like mm. we have to envision something else. We have to like, we can't keep doing the same thing and seeing how these people are just uh, failing or seeing who we're failing and, tr- and uh, yeah. like, we have to do a better job. We know better and we can do better. And we, you know, yeah. the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And there's, uh, you know, I see people that so often have the same stories and that's how I, part of how I ended up down this road, which if yeah. you asked me 10 or 15 years ago, I would have never thought that this is where it was all leading, but we, uh, you know, humans like w- we are literally wired for story too. story affects our brain. We remember 70% more, 80% longer with story. Medicine has an incredible opportunity to really integrate storytelling, which has a long tradition of hundreds of thousands of years being, uh, being its own medicine. Storytelling was all was mm-hmm. always integral to shamanic traditions and stress and story live very prescriptively in the body, very prescriptively and predictably. And I find, (laughs) I'm sorry, you just said you saying that is, is just very powerful. So I want to anchor us because I know that I, you know, I threw out all the medical magician (laughs) out out there, but I mean, I do think that, that you're a magician, but, um, but it is important. So to, to anchor it down, we're talking about folks that have chronic pain, right? Um, that where all of these traditional methodologies are just not working. And, and I don't think this is a unique thing. Like you, you were talking about people falling through the cracks. I think there are way too many people falling through the cracks. Absolutely. Absolutely. The def, the, the way, uh, the mental gymnastics sometimes that I see with which medical systems and physicians justify success are extraordinary. <laughs> That, Mm -hmm. you know, that, yes, people don't, you know, I think that there's always um, a way that it can be a better, faster, stronger transformation. Right. You don't have to mess around. I think time very often is a cop out. And granted, you know, some things do take time. You need people like people, our bodies need time, certainly Mm -hmm. for healing. But I think that time can also be an excuse that we give people when we don't know what else to say. Mm -hmm. Well, especially in the perspective of saying, well, I'm, I'm getting older. So I guess 
that's what happens. My body starts breaking down. And then um, I know for me, I mean, I look back and I'm like, okay, I can use that excuse. But then there are certain pains that I've had for a long time. And I, I don't recall an injury or whatever. And um, the unfortunate thing is, so if, if we go back to the foundation of, of, of chronic pain, right? And, um, and your background, you have a, a practitioner, a clinician background, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I've been a physical therapist for 25 years. I was an athletic trainer before I went to physical therapy school. So I've spent the better part of 30 years with my hands on people's mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. And very early in my career, I ended up in a clinic that treated a lot of patients from physiatrists, which meant a lot of chronic mm. pain and uh, unresolved situations mm -hmm. with them. And so I got, and I had an amazing mentor at the time, and I just got kicked out of the box over and over and over. <laughs> Because what, so what do you mean by that? So in terms of, you know, like when you if you're going to see some like if somebody comes with knee pain, for example, mm -hmm. or well, I'll keep the I'll keep this example really simple. Somebody comes with knee pain and they're not getting better. And, you know, my mentor would say, well, did you look at their thoracolumbar lumbar junction, like the like the upper part of their low back? You know, and as a young therapist, I would be like, oh, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and, I should have looked at the thoracal right. lumbar. You know, and right, because it's it would be more conventional and in training to say, to look at the hip and the ankle, to look at the joint above it and below it. But what I really learned how to do was to look at a whole system. Mm. And when somebody comes with chronic pain or pain in multiple locations, that is something that a lot of practitioners find really overwhelming and they'll say, oh, no, no, I'm just going to treat the which one's worse. We're going to treat that one or what two are really bothering you and we'll do that. Well, We're not going to treat everything. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. And that's so frustrating and um, anxiety filling, right? Where it's like, but but I have all the things and why are we going? It, it, it could take forever to address the, everything one at a time. Right. And it. it it, it does. And it, and it chops the body and the process and the problem into pieces that aren't necessarily helpful. And from mm. a very logical, pragmatic standpoint, a lot of physical pain issues are shock absorption issues. Hmm. And when your system gets locked down to a certain point, you lose shock absorption. So for example, by the time somebody comes to me with back pain, their biomechanics are abnormal at their big toe, their ankle, their knee, their hip, their rib cage, all the way through their neck, and their back is just taking a beating for what's not happening above and below it. They have no shock absorption. Mm. And so all of the forces are going to their low back. Mm. Now that weak link or that spot that might be taking a beating can vary depending on the individual and what's right. going on with them. But when you treat somebody as a whole person and you really see them, I mean, the number of people that, you know, I have a very efficient head to toe evaluation system and the number of people I've made cry just from saying, I see you. Yeah. I Ooh. believe you that this is uh, a, a mess. <laughs> you I know, just got like, <laughs> I just got the heebie-jeebies. I'm sorry. I got cookies. Yeah. But yeah, I can imagine how powerful. Yeah. And being seen is, is incredibly powerful. And all of the leading pain science experts will tell you they get really excited when somebody cries or gets angry because they know that their pain is going to change, that they're going to get better. Mm. Be because the difference between acute, subacute pain and chronic pain is that chronic pain gets locked into your limbic system, which is where your emotions are. And you need an oh. emotional key to unlock it from there. You cannot Ooh. logic yourself out of your limbic system. Mm. And story is a really powerful way to, uh, to, to tap into that mm. limbic system. And metaphor also 
you know, which is a huge part of story. If you're or like in the way I use story, I use lots of lots of metaphor. You know, as we're comparing the person's life to a particular myth myth or mm, other okay. story, that metaphor activates the sensory cortex, which is where the acute subacute pain lives. So it like brings you out of your limbic system. It bring it starts to extract the pain from the part of the brain where the emotions are and bring it back into the place where it can leave. Gotcha. Okay. So what's important about that shift is that when it's in the limbic system, thinking of, think of it as like, it's like grounded, it's deep, it's deep in there. And so you want to disconnect it from the emotional part of it. Once you address that link, I'm kind of trying to translate, but make sure I understand. Right. So we disconnect it and we bring it into that acute area and then at that point you could flush it out because then it's like okay we could address it and it doesn't have its anchor basically in exactly exactly it it's comes more superficial in the brain if you want to think of like more towards the outside yeah you know so you're getting it extracting it from the depths more to the superficial area and really from the you know you could probably say a little bit more from the emotional part into the thinking part so you're kind of taking that attachment to the pain away you're ch- you know yes. you're changing the relationship with the pain yes yes and not just not just what you're um aware of but subconsciously like how it's actually registering with your brain you're changing oh. the relationship too it's not just like oh i feel differently about my pain because i i think some people may feel like oh this is a softy softy thing right like I- i'm i'm just i'm throwing it out there but I can imagine some people in my life that may say like, ah, that's a little too soft. I don't want to get into like, you know, talking about my story to get rid of my back pain or my knee pain. Right. So, but to recognize that it's not just a heart thing, it's literally what's going on in your brain, whether you're aware of it or not. Absolutely. And our brains process verbal information and, and logic at about 40,000 bits per second, where they process nonverbal information and uh, at 11 million bits per second. So your body, you know, rather than using your brain to change your body, your logic, you know, thinking about mindset, for example, that you're gonna change how you think. And I don't wanna minimize how powerful mindset techniques Mm -hmm. can be. But what you really have to change is your body set mm. with, with chronic pain. And when you can change how your, your body is giving information to your brain, then you can get really rapid transformations. And then so you combine that with story, which neurologically and biochemically gives very powerful responses. And... Uh, you know, I mean, I've taken people that have had uh, you know, not as much anymore now that I'm 50, but, you know, they used to have pain that was older than I was. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I, I was. <laughs> like, darn, I can't use yeah. that as much I've anymore. had this for 40 years. Yeah, now it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but they've had pain for very long periods of time and been able to get rid of it within like one, two or three sessions. Oh, my gosh. That's nuts. Okay, so so what I want to point out to the uh, to audience here is that I mean you're you're on a mission to help other clinicians like you actually start um, start really validating and utilizing their their intuition, right? So intuitively, they're like, yeah, this makes sense, but it's tough because in the clinical world, this is, none of this is is taught. So you're on this mission to like reach out to them to say, Hey, you know, your, your intuition is correct. And I think it's, it's really powerful. And so I know that we have a lot of people, uh, you know, listening to this episode, one, the folks that are experiencing um, the pain and those that may actually have the ability to, to treat or are currently functionally treating them. And so you put together a great guide for these clinicians. Um, and we're going to talk more about it, but I just can't like hold off on this anymore. 
<laughs> right? So um, it's it's confirming the, the bridge between your story and your body. Um, but what was interesting about this particular resource that you provided is that you actually showed some, some exercises that clinicians could do and some um, just some direction on how they can integrate this into their practice. I know that you have like a whole course and everything, but I, I would like to offer this to, to the audience because Melanie worked really, really hard on this. It's an amazing uh, resource. So just text bridge. Obviously we're talking about the bridge between story and body text bridge to 411321. So 411321 is the phone number if you're in the U S and the message will be bridge B R I D G E right? And, um, and provide us your email address. It's going to ask for your email, obviously provide the email address, and then instantaneously you will get this great PDF um, that describes some of these things that you can actually do in your office to start getting a flavor, okay? Um, and then other resources that I know, Melanie, you're working on to really help clinicians connect those intuitive beliefs into their practices because they're ultimately, you know, when you're a practitioner, your goal is to improve patient outcomes. And it must be super frustrating um, to to experience that. Uh, I'm going to ask you about your, your story around that in a second, but I do want to give our international audience an opportunity to text. So if you're outside of the U.S., you can text to plus one nine zero nine seven four one one three two one and the message is bridge once again we'll ask you for your email address so don't forget that part so um melanie tell tell me a little bit more about like when when was that um that breaking point where you know you're a clinician and you have these intuitive feelings and you're like okay, I, I need to explore this more. I need to research this more um, to, to really start committing to understanding how story can be connected. So like, what was that breaking mm -hmm. point, or that trigger? Well, the honestly, it was my own midlife crisis. Mm. <laughs> that kind of in the throes of my... Uh, uh, and, you tell. And I've always had strong intuition, but I don't... I think I would have always called it my logic. I, I would have not, you know, like, you know, through my most of my 20s and 30s, I think I would was really just thought I was being logical. I don't think I really thought I was being intuitive. But when you treat people, yes. you would treat patients long enough, you learn like you hear the same stories over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And I have a string of professional letters after my name, you know, so I have a lot of, you know, well recognized credentials within my professional circles. And I have this other set of soft skills that, you know, and what I really love is helping people with those spiritual and stress related underpinnings of their physical dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And, and I've just, I just, when I was introduced to chakras many, many years ago, that was, it just really started to help me make sense of some of the chronic pain patients. Ah. And in the, so, so you naturally, just started going in that direction. Because I did. Again, I did. It was just all yeah. your intuition. You're like, well, logically, it, 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 yeah. I thought you know I was being thinking? logical. I didn't think I was being intuitive at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this isn't woo woo. It makes sense. And honestly, right. I, I mean, as a scientist, I, like, I, I actually do feel it's logical, but it's very interesting how in the medical world it is considered woo woo just because it hasn't been studied within our, well, actually, I think you would probably say differently, but the understanding is it hasn't been studied in the same way that a pharmaceutical product, for example, sure, is, is right. studied. It's not FDA approved, right? Right. Um, yeah. So, and it, have you found studies like where where did you start kind of merging um, what you felt and? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You so know, when really, I I really felt like as I was perceiving, you know, having more intuitive perceptions and opening that up or being more aware of that for myself, that I really find like, there's a logic, there's some, there's something systematic happening here yeah. that this isn't, you know, my, I was like, this isn't like, I'm just pulling things out of thin air. Like there's something organized that's happening here. Yeah. And in the, and, and I took a couple steps back from my practice a few years ago because it, to kind of reconcile like my highly credentialed part of myself and my soft skills and figure out how I needed to show up for clients yeah. in a way that was really authentic because it was stressing me out to be split like that. Right. 
yeah, it's like it's it's hard to feel forced to separate the two when you're like, no, no, no. They're, oh, they're absolutely. Separated. Right, right. <laughs> And I would contend, you know, and I treat lots of medical professionals that will tell me about their intuition, but they won't tell anyone else. Interesting. It's so, their big secret. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that because, um, because I know as much as it's clearly interesting to those folks that are experiencing the pain, um, this is more theory for them because they can't address it, right? They could say, oh, sh sure, I could see how maybe there's some story that has happened sometime in my life that might be associated with it, but that's not going to relieve the pain. That's why it's important for you to connect with those that can start implementing what you, you teach because the, the pain relief, the change is in their hands. Right. So tell me about, um, about those healthcare professionals, clinicians, practitioners, um, describe who they are that typically, you know, take your course or look for your guidance. Oh. Um, so that if they're in the audience, I want their ears to be like ringing right now. <laughs> sure. I, well, as a, as a physical therapist, I get lots of physical therapists and occupational therapists because that we share a language, yes. you know, and an understanding for sure. I get, uh, but I also have nurses, uh, the physicians I get are typically, um, at least interested in more integrative health, mm -hmm. um, functional medicine in, you know, they're in a little bit more of that sort of realm. Right. Um, uh, I get a lot of, uh, I also have a, like I get yoga instructors because they actually, you know, yoga, uh, because the positions are named after, animals and trees and things like, you know, like you get, uh -huh. like they really get the story connection, right. you know, in terms of bringing it into their uh, practice as well. But um, so like physicians that have, especially physicians that have a yoga background will be in, you know, a attracted to what I'm doing as well. And then so inherently you have their, their background or credentials that we've described, mm -hmm. but from a personality perspective, like what are they, what are they thinking? Like for, for those out there, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm assuming they're thinking there's got to be a better way, right? They're, they're sitting oh, yeah. patients and they're frustrated because. Ab absolutely. And they don't want, to, like, they're not willing to settle for this is the only answer. I think that there's this deep uh, level of caring and uh, desire to really change things, but they're like, you know, but they recognize that there's something like they see the people falling through the cracks and they know that like what, it, you know, and like, how can I keep that from hap from happening? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, to, to use the, the more clinical term, uh, outcomes like patient outcomes oriented. Right. But I think there's a difference. I mean, once again, I, I I'm not only a scientist, I, I was a practicing healthcare professional. Right. So, so there is a difference in those healthcare professionals that are um, they're treating from their heart. Like they, the, their satisfaction in their job is not the paycheck. The satisfaction of their job is actually changing lives and seeing the impact of what they're doing. Right. And so I think that those are the perfect people to connect with you because then they're, they're open. I, you know, they can, they can learn and dis determine decipher whether this is something they're comfortable exploring, but with, with their patients, but it doesn't hurt to have conversation with oh, your patients. Right. Absolutely. And I connect objective data, like ways that you can objectively measure yes. uh, a person. And then, you know, like sometimes like I'll even just talk, like I do this a lot in workshops, like we'll just talk about story or do a little like writing exercise around it or something like that. And then I will retest everybody or have them retest themselves and they're better just after wow. contemplating it. And so it, it's so fascinating. It doesn't even take the, you know, you don't even always have to go down the road of, to, of the physical exercise piece to do it. Wow. So it's, it's just literally taking time out to just be open to exploring yeah. a, another layer, another level. It's not sure. one or the other. Ab absolutely. All. No, I mean, my work makes 
what I've discovered is it makes everybody else's work better. It doesn't compete. It doesn't replace unless you choose to mm-hmm. do it that way. But the awareness helps make your work better. It amplifies the outcomes that you are already getting. And when you have those hunches, which are often very true, especially with chronic pain patients, that they're having a lot of, that they have had or are having a lot of trauma and drama in their lives, Mm. that, and you see these, these stress patterns that, it gives you a way to really logically go, okay, so this is showing up a lot at the knees. Let me ask these questions. This is showing up a lot at the neck. I'm going to go ask this set of questions. So it gives you a very specific approach. So there's a connection. So it's like, oh, if it's, if it's neck pain, if it's back pain, like there's a, there's a specific approach. So it's, it's very scientific, even though. Absolutely. Uh, wow. So can you give us an example of, of, of just maybe one of just a story of a patient without, you know, using patient confidentiality, right? Yes. Um, but where they've been experiencing pain for a long time and, and, and kind of what, what did you do with, with them? This is, mm-hmm. I'm very curious. <laughs> <laughs> She's thinking for those of you just listening. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, I want to, I want to, uh, uh, I'm sure you have many. That's oh, I've got many examples. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, um, well, so, I mean, it can, well, so it can go in, it's, the one that's coming to mind right now is somebody that had a, had chronic neck pain okay, and, and tightness. And I, uh, and she's, a, she's a clinician also. Oh, okay. and so, and it was interesting. I took her through, um, so we did the, uh, the structural evaluation to find out where she was limited. And some of these, these are the tests that are actually in the handout, but I tested, oh. you know, that, uh, but anyway, so, and so she was tight in all of these, uh, with all of these tests and, so, and then we talked about what she really want, wanted. And so like we talked about where uh, she was being a hero at the, uh, being somebody else's hero at the expense of her own and where she was satisfying somebody else, everybody else's desires at the expense of her own. So we were really kind of tapped into. So, okay. So this is interesting because was she, was she aware of your unique approach or was she just like, just do your thing because this has just been bothering me for way too long. And well, I'll- as she came to me because as a clinician, I, mean, I uh, the, uh, my clinical expertise is in the vagus nerve and treating it as a pinch nerve in the body. And that's really was why she came to me in the first place was for the vagus nerve work. So she we did not come for the magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's her own, she's her own special magician, I will say, but it's oh. the, uh, yeah, but she, you know, but we started with this, you know, I really like, I didn't jump in and do the hands-on stuff. Like I might have, like I sometimes do, you know, we started with this discussion And we, I had her list what she wanted. And then I had her do kind of a reverse psychology statement about it that, you know, like, um, that like it would be like, I have, uh, I can't remember specifically what hers was right now, but like, I have like full freedom to move pain-free in my entire life. This is so terrible. Uh Like, like putting positive and negative statements Ooh, okay. adjacent to each other. So we went through this kind of reverse psychology approach uh-huh. and, and then retested her and she was completely, no, her tests were completely normal after that. No. Are you see- like, and she's like, she, she was really uncomfortable doing the exercise. She's like, I'm feeling this in my body. It's like, uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> well, and, and what's interesting. So if she, she went to you um, specifically as a vagus nerve, expert Mm -hmm. right so she's thinking like oh you're gonna like do body movement and such sure what was her reaction to even being asked these questions was she she was she was open to it she was also very but she was also uh she was shocked that it changed her body 
the the just the questions changed her body the way it did wow. they did and you know and this is where it taps into the subconscious aspect yes. of things too and so and then i did and you know we finished with hands on work uh huh well which i'm sure it's much easier to do the work now that she some of that that tightness and restriction has absolutely been. absolutely well and medically we know statistically that stress is 75 to 90 percent of all pain and dysfunction but we yeah. don't talk very specifically <laughs> about we don't talk very specifically about what stress is like we don't have a stress prescription you know we're like oh you yeah. should go exercise you should meditate or whatever but we don't really dig into what that is right and that's right. really what i've created in the body and around the vagus nerve just because that's how i evaluate you know it's one of my outcome measures right. and you know and something i've branded myself around for a long time and when you really when you bridge the story in the body you get these amazing transformations wow. and you really get to the root of the problem Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not always that people don't then need additional help. And as a practitioner, I will tell you it, that it also what happens with you is that you bring all of yourself to the table. You're not segmenting yourself off either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you bring all of yourself to the table, miracles happen. Yeah. And I think what, what's interesting is we're, we're in a specialist world, right? So it's like, oh, there's something wrong with, with your knee or your back or your, or you have migraines or whatever. So, you know, and, and every special, and I'm, I'm not knocking that at all because we're not having the discussion of picking one or the other. It's oh, it's the not an, I, it's absolutely not an either or situation. Specialists, yeah. like nobody can hold all the information that a specialist is required to know like that's it's mm -hmm. absolutely reasonable to have that but it's just wrapping it up in something that acknowledges emotion and and the rest of the body holistically and i do think that it's it's really important um for clinicians let me say for clinicians to be open to bridging their intuition into their practice. You know, we're talking about bridging, you're talking about bridging soul, uh, body and, and, and story, but I think it's, it's vital for uh, clinicians to start bridging that, that intuition into actual practice. And, um, and you did that. You've seen, you've seen the results. You're on this mission. I mean, this is why we totally think you are hashtag rocket fuel um, for obviously for your, for the clients that you serve as patients, but for those, those healthcare professionals, those practitioners that you are, are helping. So what I want to do is offer them the opportunity to receive this, this guide again. And this is literally just an appetizer guys. I, uh, what I asked Melanie to, to do was just to put something together for clinicians to start exploring, you know, their intuition and, and, and start just understanding what are some of these exercises? Cause it seems kind of vague, which is why, why I know, you know, giving that example, I think is wonderful, but there's so much knowledge around that. Just the fact that you're saying, okay, there's a specific set of questions, a specific set of like a, a physical evaluation that you would do first and then this is how you merge the questions and then by the way i mean if they answer this then this if they answer that, that you know so um so just take the first step to acknowledging as a clinician that your intuition is 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 correct and i ask you as as a patient of many of those right and for the patients that are listening to the story that are like oh my gosh where can i find melanie right we need to make more melanies right? and that's that's why she's on on a mission to teach other clinicians so please text bridge to 411321 if you're in the united states you'll receive the bridge between your story and your body and some other resources that she's putting together to help you actually transform these these beliefs that you have into actual patient outcomes. And if you are listening to this internationally, once again, um, text it to plus one nine zero nine seven four one one three two one. The message will be bridge and we will ask for your email address. Please don't forget that because that is what's going to make it into your, um, your email inbox. Um, 
there's so much more that that I I want to ask. I just really want to thank you so much, Melanie, for for joining us. I think it's important to have this discussion. Um, it's it's critical for the patients that are out there that really need the help. And um, I think it's really noble your 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 mission to try and share this education with other clinicians. Tell us a little bit more about how how it is that that you support clinicians. Is it one on one? Is it uh, group I, training? I, do. Does- I, have a, I have a group training program that I'm starting again this fall. I taught it last year, and so I'm going to reteach it in a little bit of a different, more spread out format um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> because it takes more in, in, uh, with lots of integration time because it takes a while. To, it, it, it's a different enough paradigm. It just takes a little while to digest it. Sure. And, sure. Uh, and I could imagine them actually implementing it and then wanting to be able to connect with you to say, okay, this was my experience and, and tweak their experience. So ab- I think that's absolutely, absolutely. Last time we did all the integration at the end, this time I'm integra- putting more integration in the midst of it. Okay. The, um, and I do work with people one-on-one as well, both in person. I'm physically in New Orleans, Louisiana. I work with mm-hmm. people all over the world. So uh, that is also an option. So you do work with them virtually? Yeah. Yes. As well. Oh, interesting. All righty, all righty. Well, what I did want to mention is if you are a clinician and you text BRIDGE to 411321 or to plus 1909-741-1321, um, Melanie also has offered the opportunity to, um, to connect with her and to talk about maybe how you've integrated what she taught in this particular piece or or just talk about your experiences, your intuition and how you could start bridging um, that, that gap because you're on the right track and your patients are waiting <laughs> for better yeah. outcomes. Any okay. final words, Melanie? Oh, um, I will say, I go, I'll challenge the healthcare practitioners, especially to Ooh. like think about the clinicians you know that, are really, really good at what they do or have an excellent reputation in your field. And I will guarantee you that whether or not they're telling you this, they are really pulling in their, merging their intuition and their logic with what they do. And I hear this all the time. I know cancer surgeons that always get all the cancer because they do this. I know, you know, this is just, I, 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 you know, surgeons, like they don't, they do it in different ways, mm. but I see this all the time. Like they know they go into some kind of zone when they're in surgery or when they're performing really high and they're, and so this is really about uh, getting you to be able to do the same yeah, kind of, kind of thing and to really, you know, and, and bridge that for yourself. And it's really, it makes you, it makes your life better is the best part about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, especially for those clinicians that are results and patient outcome. Absolutely. If, if getting people better is your drug of choice, then this is absolutely yeah. for you. <laughs> I love it. Beautiful <laughs> final words from <laughs> Melanie Weller, who is clearly hashtag rocket fuel for clinicians, for her patients. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to have you back because there's definitely a lot of conversation. We totally went over my 30 minute interview. Thank you so much. And I hope you all have a rocking day. Thank you, Wanda.